I yeah. love, 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 love dogs. Yeah. Cats, on the other hand, I mean, I, I do like cats. cats. Don't ever do a film with them, though. Because if they're kittens, they, they'll play with that microphone or a ball of string yeah. and lick a saucer of milk. It's really sweet. Lovely. Cats, on the other hand, just couldn't give a shit. They just, like, <laughs> they just kind of wander around looking really unimpressed with everything. They're, I had fantasies, but let's not go there. I, I just, you know, the, the thing about it, I'm not a cat harmer, please. No, I love cats. I love them, but I, 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 working with them is really tough. But to yeah. watch them and just to see how they, they come in, they completely use you just for food and a little bit of what they need, and then they're out again. They're so independent. It's kind of unnerving. It'd be a bit like living with a supermodel. It'd be like, well, <laughs> you're amazing, but it's kind of, you're kind of making me feel a bit, I don't know, I don't really know what to do when I'm around you. I was, in, I was in an all boys boarding school. No, any time I tried to cross dress, it went horribly wrong. I, I played Rosalind, so that gives you a hint as to my kind of girl. Girl playing a boy, playing a girl. But I did play Queen of the Fairies. I played Titania. That was my big break at an all boys boarding school. They were, they were old enough when they'd had me to know that it was a ridiculous choice of occupation. I spent a lot of good money on my education. I threw it all back at them. There was a moment in a car park when I was, I must have been in my early 20s. I was at university. I played Salieri and Amadeus, and I came out and said goodnight to them. And Dad got hold of me by the shoulder and went, Look, you're better at this now than I ever was or ever will be. Really? Yeah, I got bitten very early on. I mean, I saw mum at the side of a stage before she stepped through the kind of very sort of unromantic flats that stage scenery is supported by with like, you know, big Sharpie marks left downstage corner window opening, you know, just and these weights holding these buttresses. And then she opens it and there's this flood of light and heat in my and my memory of it and just this kind of roar of whatever was going on, this crowd reaction to what she was then entering into in this sort of farce that she was doing. And I was just like, wow. And I just saw my mom and I just saw her just step through and literally kind of transform and be something else, you know, and that was sort of amazing. And then I, you know, apparently I stood on the stage at Stratford. I do remember looking out of a state on a stage, from a stage into the auditorium, and it was just completely dark and I was really drawn to the danger of that, really drawn to the need to kind of communicate to it. Or be, I felt pulled out by it and just sort of stood there for a long time. Um, and then my godmother apparently said to my mum, oh, oh, that was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> we are here to talk about The Power of the Dog, a film by Jane Campion based on Thomas Savage's extraordinary 1925 set Montana novel. I think I was drawn to the duplicity of the character, someone who's completely drunk on his own masculinity to the point that it blinds him to love or the potential of kindness because of how far he is from his one taste of that forbidden fruit and um, the tragedy of a man who's living his life without being able to love or being loved um, really pulled me into Phil's world. I think it was integral to make him look, well, to, to convince and authenticate how lived an experience it was for him to manage the animals, the men, the land the weather, braiding, all the skill so sets, hard. the cigarette rolling, the, which I never quite mastered. It's harder than most people think, and I, you know, I, I'm not proud. I went to anyone who could <laughs> profess to doing it, and uh, you know, everyone hit walls with it. Fine to roll a really big, fat doobie that kind of falls apart in your first take and gets in your mouth and burns a hole in your chaps. That's great, and I did that a lot. <laughs> uh, for real, but um, it's very hard. He's, he's described as right, you know, they're, they're kind of rail thin, tight cigarettes, everything about him that's kind of controlled and buttoned up, but also with great dexterity as well as strength. This tiny little thing, really hard to do. Is there anyone particularly that has rendered you starstruck? What do you say to Paul McCartney? It hasn't already been said. You just become, you, you, I, you, I get it, you just kind of don't know what to do. Um, I don't ask for selfies, I don't do that, that's for sure. Um, but I, I do get really thrown. They're sort of coming to you to say something nice to you. That's how it happens. I don't have the courage to go to Paul McCartney. He came over to me at a party and went, hey, Benedict, great work, keep it up, I love it. <laughs> it's terrible, Paul McCartney.